Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit and today we are discussing 7 breast biopia treatments. So the first treatment is the very common treatment that is the prescription glasses or the reading glasses. Now when we talk about spectacles in breast biopia, they can be actually two types. The one which cater to only one single point, single focal point that is either they help us in seeing in distance or in for the near and it's called the single focal point spectacles or they could be multiple focal point spectacles in which you will have multiple focal points present in single glass that means the same glass will uh, will be actually capable uh, will make you capable to, to focus at distance and also to focus at near and maybe also to focus at intermediate vision so such a, a spectacle is called a multiple focal point spectacle or a multifocal type of spectacles whereas a single focal point means that if you're using the glasses for the near vision your glasses will be able to focus only uh, the near points based upon the power of the lens that is present in the spectacle so for such single focal point the patient might have to use actually two glasses one for the distance and one for the near and such glasses are called single focal point glasses now there are various types of glasses which are available for breast biopia as I told you the single vision lenses single vision lenses means that the patient will have different uh, lenses or different glasses for different purposes for distance he might have a different glass altogether and for the near he might have a different glass so those are called the single vision glasses or single vision lenses and very commonly referred to as the lead, uh, reading glasses also then we have the multiple focal lenses in which we have the bifocal lens in the bifocal lens as the name suggests by we have two focal uh, lenses two focal uh, points which are catered by that lens so Therefore, we have one catering for the distance and one catering for the near and since two lenses are merged in this one single frame, such type of glasses are called the bifocal glasses. Now, what if we were to combine three lenses together in one frame so that the patient also has a vision not just for distance and near but also for intermediate for doing certain important tasks like reading, uh, reading or playing at the computer, working at its work desk or something like that. So, such a glass is called a trifocal lens and then uh, in all these lenses as we have seen the bifocal lens also have a, has a line like this and the trifocal lens has instead two demarcation line like uh, this which might actually uh, uh, not look cosmetically so appealing to the patient so such patients can go for lenses in which the power actually changes instead of changing very abruptly as in trifocal and bifocal lenses from distance to near the power is going to gradually change from distance to near and such lenses are called the progressive lenses these are good lenses uh, actually for young patients who can actually adapt to these lenses and they are good cosmetically however adaptability and uh, they might not work for all types of patients then the most commonly used glasses as i told you are actually the bifocal glasses and based upon the near segment that means the glasses that as i told you they usually have the distance vision present on top and the near uh, vision uh, glasses will be or lenses will be present at the bottom of those uh, lenses so the bifocal glasses are again classified based upon the near segment so if the near segment uh, is actually in the shape of a half moon so that is called a d segment or it is called a flat top or a straight top so as can be seen in this picture over here this looks like a d and since the top uh, part of the segment is flat this is called the flat top or straight top and it looks like d so it is also called a d segment sometimes the entire lens might be fixed and that's called a round segment as you can see over here this is the round segment then the same round segment can be curved like this so that becomes a curved top now some patients might just have a narrow rectangular area like this in the near segment which is called a ribbon segment then sometimes the near segment might actually be uh, very e actually might be fit to the half of the lens like this and the other half that is the top half of the lens might be occupied by the distance segment or the distance part of the lens and that a lens uh, that lens in which 
the halves of the lens are occupying the frame and they are actually bisecting the pupil. Such a lens is called the Franklin type or the executive type or E style type of lenses or glasses, bifocal glasses and they all these types of glasses are actually used uh, for specific occupations and uh, executives are specifically used for those people who do a lot of near work who need a greater segment for their near task and who do uh, who read a lot you know for such patients executive and franklin types of lenses can be given so this is the uncut round bifocal in which you can see the near segment uh, is actually totally circular in shape and then this one is the D segment or also called the flat top then again this one is the executive type then this is the curved top and this is the double D type of uh, bifocal lenses so this double D type of bifocal lens is in which the D segments are present at the top and also at the near now the question is as to why and why will a person need near segments also on the top of his uh, looking frame so such things is actually depends upon the occupation of the patient and specifically in people especially like pilots or a person who uh, a mechanic who repairs who deals with his work mostly in the up gaze you know like re repairing the fans or, or working on the ceilings so such patients might actually need near segment also on top of their frame and such patients might actually benefit with this double d design of the um, glass in which they will have near segment on top and also at the, uh, the bottom of the glass now uh, the most uh, which type of uh, near segment should be actually used for the patient it depends upon the occupation of the patient and most easily grinded are the flat top and they're also the commonly used one especially when we talk about the myopic glasses it is uh, there's actually no controversy that flat top glasses or the flat top bifocal segment is very good for those patients who have a uh, myopic correction or the concave lens in the, for the distance whereas the flat top is slightly controversial for a hypero so what is the reason for that this is actually based on the principle of image jump and image displacement which occurs in bifocal lenses but uh, for the uh, uh, in order to not lengthen the uh, timings of the uh, video I would not be discussing that in this video so the most common use is flat top the next option of treatment for patients suffering with breast myopia is by using the contact lenses and it is especially useful for patients who do not want to wear spectacles now there are two options by which we can use contact lenses to correct breast myopia number one is by using monovision principle the meaning of monovision is that the patient can actually use two contact lenses two contact lenses what do i mean to say is that either he can use uh, one in one eye he can wear the contact lens for distant and he can become emetropic for distant vision and the other eye he can wear the contact lens with the focal length catered towards the near vision and since we are actually correcting only one eye uh, with one contact one type of contact lens this principle is actually called as the monovision contact lenses in monovision contact lenses basically the lens for distant vision is put on the eye which is the dominant eye now with monovision the eye that will see well for distant vision will be slightly blurred when you try to see closely and the eye that is set up for the close vision that is the other eye will have blurred vision when looking at the distant object so therefore uh, but the patient when the uh, patient is going to look with both eyes open the result will be acceptably clear and comfortable vision at all the distances so this type of counseling is very important uh, to the patient who is being prescribed with monovision contact lenses now another type of contact lens treatment that we can uh, give to patients who are suffering with press pyopia is the multifo uh, multifocal contact lens design now there are two basic types of multifocal contact lens de uh, designs one is the simultaneous vision design and the other one is segmented design design now in the simultaneous vision design we are giving the contact lens to the person in such a way that he is simultaneously able to see the distance uh, 
uh, object and also the near object now such a correction if it is present in the form of concentric rings on the contact lens as shown over here where certain rings are catering to the distant vision and certain rings are catering to the near vision such a design is called the concentric type of multifocal contact lens however as you can see in the concentric type of multifocal contact lens there are actually discrete lines a demarcation lines between the near and the distant segments however if the lines become more blended that means there's if there's a gradual transition to the other powers as you move across the contact lens like distant near and intermediate as you can see they are nicely blending such a design of contact lens is called as the aspheric type of multifocal contact lens for press biopia now there's another type of lens as i told you is the segmented type of contact lens and it is very similar to that of the bifocal in which the distance power is present in the central part and also in the upper part of the contact lens and the bottom edge is actually uh, the one which is and the bottom part is the one which is actually catering to the near segment right so this is called the segment now let us talk about the surgical treatments for presbyopia. Now till now we have studied the optical treatment of presbyopia in which we have the uh, glasses and the contact lenses. Now in the surgical treatment of the presbyopia we have static methods and the dynamic methods. The static methods basically aim at increasing the depth of focus and the surgeries which are included under the uh, static method are the LASIKs that is monovision LASIK or you can have press biopic LASIK or they could be corneal inlays, conductive keratoplasty and multifocal intraocular lens implantation. In the dynamic methods, uh, since uh, we are using the movement principle of accommodation, we have scleral implants and accommodative IOL and these are called the dynamic methods for restoring the accommodation. Now let us talk about what is meant by the monovision LASIK. In monovision LASIK, as it is very similar to the LASIK that is performed for myopia and for hyperopia. Now we know that in myopic patients, the patients who are myopic, they have more of a prolate cornea. That means a more positive cornea, more conical shape of the cornea is there. And that cornea is actually ablated. The extra, extra conical part of the cornea, extra curvature, sorry, of the cornea is ablated and the cornea is made flatter in case of myopes however in case of hyperopes who are actually having a flatter cornea the corneal uh, tissue is ablated in the periphery in such a way that the cornea will now become more uh, prolate or curv uh, curved so that is the hyperopic lasik now in monovision lasik basically we identify which eye is dominant for the patient and now the dominant eye will be corrected in such a way that the patient will become emitropic or will be able to see 6 by 6 with the dominant eye now if the dominant eye was myopic you will do a myopic lasik on the dominant eye or if it was hyperopic you will do a hyperopic lasik on the dominant eye however the non-dominant eye which is the other eye will be corrected for the near vision for the near vision the person should be able to see the objects which are present closer to the eye and therefore as we know from our video on accommodation that in order to see objects which are present closer to the eye we need more power to the eye and more power means we have to make the patient myopic that means we have to do something similar to what we do in hyperopic lasik that means something to, so that we can make the cornea more prolate uh, so that is a principle of monovision that means the dominant eye is made to see 6x6 emitropic and the non-dominant eye will be corrected for neovision that means will be corrected by LASIK in such a way and in LASIK we know we are using the eczema laser so the cornea will be excised in such a way that the patient will become 6x6 for the near vision from the dominant eye now such a patient when he's able when he will actually use both his eyes now he will not have problem for distance and also for neovision so this is the monovision lasik the next type of lasik that we have is the multifocal lasik 
Now the multifocal LASIK is also similar to monovision LASIK because we are using LASIK. However, the ablation is slightly different. In, in monovision LASIK, we were correcting individual eyes uh, in, in different ways. However, in pressed by LASIK, both the eyes are treated in a similar fashion and both the eyes are corrected for distance and also for near. Now, uh, in, in the pressed by LASIK, we have the central pressed by LASIK, the peripheral pressed by LASIK and the blended vision that is a pressed by one. Now at this point I would like to tell you that the multifocal LASIK which is also called the PRESPI LASIK is in trial phase and it is not approved yet by the FDA. So this is the central model of Presby LASIK. You can see that the central part of the cornea will be ablated in such a way that it will get corrected for the neovision. That means the central part of the cornea is going to be made more prolate. The intermediate portion as you can see is purple in color and that is corrected in order to see for distance. That means that part of the cornea will be made more of oblate. So the corneal surface will look somewhat like this, okay, prolate in the center and it will be a little bit oblate or flatter in the periphery. So this is called the central presby lasik in which the central part is being corrected for the near vision. Then we have another uh, another model and that is the press peripheral model of uh, presbylasic in which the central part is being corrected for the distant vision. That means the central part of the cornea is being made flatter and the peripheral part of the cornea is actually being made more uh, steeper and it's being corrected for the near vision. So always the central model is much better than the peripheral model. And then we have a press bion which is also called the blended vision in which such sharp demarcation lines will not come between the near and the distant and this is actually wavefront guided and also more customized for the patient and those distant and the near zones are going to get blended very smoothly in such a way that the patient will have increased depth of field and increased depth of focus. So this is the press by LASIK also called the multifocal LASIK because we are correcting for different focal lengths in the same eye uh, all at once. However, this is not FDA approved. Coming to another treatment option for press biopia and that is the corneal inlays. Now corneal inlays are nothing but they are implants which are played in which are placed inside the corneas and therefore as they are placed inside the cornea they also call keratophakia. Okay, so now in corneal inlays, basically what we are doing is we are placing an implant inside a pocket placed in the cornea it's in such a way that the patient will now be able to look at the near object or near focus. Now, based on the way they work, we have three types, the refractive corneal inlays, the corneal reshaping inlays and the small aperture inlays. The refractive corneal inlays will work very similar to that of a multifocal lens. That means you are going to place an implant which will have more power in the center and different power in the periphery so as to focus for different focal points that means near and distance. So that is called a refractive corneal inlay which is very similar to the functioning of a multifocal eye wheel or a multifocal lens or a corneal lens. Now a corneal reshaping inlay will be an inlay which will have different thickness at its different points so this inlay will be more steeper in the center and flatter in the periphery now when you are going to place this inlay inside the cornea the central part of the cornea will become more steeper and now the central part of the cornea will be able to focus for the near objects whereas the peripheral part of the cornea will now cater for the distant focus and the patient will be able to see the distant uh, objects as well so this is called the corneal reshaping inlays or implants and the example is the raindrop near vision inlay then we have another types of inlays or implants which will have a central aperture in the uh, in their uh, themselves and these are called the small aperture inlays and the most commonly used is the camera inlay this works on the principle of the pinhole uh, device so what is meant by this pinhole principle basically uh, what happens is that we know that uh, the uh, eyeball works in such a way that the objects which are placed in the center will have more uh, diverging rays and the the rays which are coming from the periphery will be more parallel rays now all these rays are going to come and focus on the uh, fovea 
and they are going to pass like this from the lens now if you place a, a very thin uh, a very small aperture in front of the eyeball only the rays which are passing from the center they are going to go and directly focus on the uh, fovea and the other rays which are coming from the far which might not pass and uh, through the center and focus on the fovea will all be actually cut off so only the central rays which will actually always focus on the fovea are going to pass and the peripheral rays which might be more converging or diverging and because of their vergence might not focus on the fovea will be cut off and that is the principle of pinhole so the first picture over here shows the refractive inlay so you can see there's a device like this and it actually has different power in the center and the periphery so works like a multifocal and this is refractive inlay then we have a reshaping inlay so you can see the, this reshaping inlay is placed and it is more uh, thicker in the center and it is thinner in the periphery so the center part will become more prolate in the cornea and focus for the near objects then we have the pinhole devices like the camera inlay which has a central aperture so this is a small aperture type of corneal inlay next we have the neovision conductive keratoplasty now in the neovision conductive keratoplasty it is also a type of ablation but here we are using the radio waves using a handheld probe that you can see here which is very thin almost as thin as a hair strand now this uh, device is actually going to ablate it's going to burn the cornea on specific locations in the periphery of the cornea these marked lines as you can see this is where the radio waves are going to come they're going to heat up the cornea and ablate and burn the cornea in this structure in this area now when such a thing happens what uh, what is going to happen is that as the cornea is going to get burned in this peripheral area it is also going to contract much like you're putting a belt around the cornea and as you can see in this pig as you put as you tighten the belt around the stomach you can see the other parts actually bulging similar way the cornea is going to get bulge and it will become more prolate and therefore it will cater for the near vision as the curvature of the cornea is going to increase now as you can see in this diagram this was a normal cornea and as you do the conductive keratoplasty here okay it is like a tightening of the belt and the cornea is becoming more prolate now however this is a monovision type of technique we do not do conductive keratoplasty in both the eyes it is usually done in one eye the next type of treatment is accommodative eye well now we know that from our video on accommodation and from the principle of accommodation that the normal crystalline lens is actually very flexible able to move and flex itself in such a way that it can focus at far and it can also focus focus at near now at at the old age or the middle age this flexibility of the lens is lost the lens is now not able to become fatter and increase its power to look at the near object and that is what is presbyopia now what if we actually had intraocular lenses or artificial lenses which could actually uh, mimic this normal fattening of the lens or increasing the power of the lens and which could actually mimic accommodation and therefore deal with the presbyopia so such lenses are called the accommodative lenses now in this accommodative lenses we have the single optic design now the single optic designs uh, are the lenses which are going to change their position in the capsular bag during the accommodative effort so they are going to actually move forward or backwards based upon the ciliary body contraction and therefore they are going to change the power of the lens and they are going to uh, stimulate or simulate sorry accommodation then we have the dual optic eye wells now the dual optic eye wells will utilize a positive powered lens which is present like this and then there will be a concave convex lens like this sorry concave convex lens like this which is present like this okay so now what happens is as the ciliary body is going to contract this the two the distance between the two lenses is going to increase and as the distance between the two lenses is going to increase what happens is that the accommodation will be actual uh, the power of the eyeball will increase and uh, it will result in increasing the effective power of the overall lens and the patient will be able to see the near objects and this is called the dual optic eye wells then we have another type of eye wells which can actually change their shape during the accommodation and they are called the deformable design now accommodative eye wells is a really big topic and i would not be able to tell ab about them in detail in this video and therefore i'm just mentioning about them uh, briefly 
So this is, these are some of the accommodative eye wells. Now after the optical treatment and the surgical treatment, then we have one more new treatment which has come up and which has also been approved by the FDA and that is the pharmacological treatment of presbyopia. Now Allegan is the company which has actually made this uh, beauty eye drops, pilocarpine hydrochloride of thalmic solution which is about 1.25% and it works by causing meiosis. Now we know if you would remember the near reflex, the near reflex is actually made up of three components. It is made up of meiosis that is a contraction of the pupil and then it is made up of accommodation which we already know what it is and then the third component is convergence that is moving of the eyeball towards the nose so all these three components are important components of the near reflex so whenever one occurs obviously the other two will also occur so pilocarpine uses this principle and causes meiosis and as it causes meiosis some point of some part of accommodation is also stimulated and moreover as the meiosis occurs uh, the pupil becomes smaller and uh, uh, also it is the the depth of focus is also enhanced and it also believe that pilocarpine also stimulates the uh, ciliary body now the percentage which is used is 1.25 a day in the drop is used every day and it works as early as 15 minutes and the effect can last up to six hours however there's a problem that it can cause headache and uh, red eyes okay in the patient however this headache occurs uh, only in those people in who have some residual ciliary body action because the cause of headache over here is a ciliary body contraction by the pilocarpine because pilocarpine is going to act on the muscarinic receptors which are present on the ciliary body so these are the beauty eye drops by allergan so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day